My name is Matt Kaur, and I'm a concept artist in the video game industry. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about the specifics of how I go about making these digital paintings. A lot of people seem to have in their mind that it's a very confusing process. Well, I've gone ahead and created an online resource that'll hopefully demystify some of this process. Because the truth is, there's a lot of practice involved, because it is artwork. But the computer part of it, using Photoshop, is really not all that challenging. So I've created these videos to distill the process that I use in Photoshop down into repeatable steps. And even though I love watching speed paint videos on YouTube, my approach is going to be a little different. Instead of showing you exactly how it is that I approach a single illustration, I want to try and communicate the general principles that I use so that you can then take them and apply it to whatever it is you want to work on. So we're going to start out slow, and by the end of these five videos, you'll be off and running. So now I'm going to show you the difference between using a mouse to draw versus using a Wacom tablet. So first I'm going to draw with my mouse. And now I'm going to pick up my tablet and I'm going to draw. So there's a couple things you might notice. On one hand, the mouse has only a binary action. It's either on or it's off. With a stylus, you have a gradation of pressure sensitivity to go from light to dark. Also, my motions can be much more fluid because it's a lot more like drawing with a pen than it is clicking with a mouse. So this is a crucial first step to get started. Now before we get in too deep here, I'm going to take a step back and make a few definitions. So in Photoshop terms, a palette is not what you'd think of in the traditional painting sense. Instead, whenever I say palette, I refer to a floating panel of information. When you open the window menu, you can hide or reveal palettes. So this is the layers palette. And at the bottom of the palette, you can see buttons that will create new layers and delete old layers. The vertical palette on the left side of the screen that you see right here is called the tools palette. And this is going to be open almost all the time and it contains things like the brush tool, the eraser tool, and your color swatches. And when you click a tool like the brush tool, the horizontal bar at the top of the screen will change. And this is called the tool properties. So as you see here, I've got opacity and flow. Those are properties of the brush tool. If I were to change it to the eraser, I'd have different properties up there. And now once you've got the brush tool selected, one of the most simple and common actions is to change the color on the brush. So to do that, you're going to go to the bottom of the tool palette and you'll see two squares of color. It probably defaults to a black square and a white square. Now the one that's overlapping the other is called the foreground color. And for our purposes, the foreground color is what's on your brush. So right now it's black. And if I want to change it, I click on this foreground square and a new window opens called the color picker. So you can manipulate the color here, choose one you like and click OK. And now you have a new color on your brush. Now you're watching this video because you want to use Photoshop for painting. Now the fact is, other artists use Photoshop for all manner of purposes. Some use it for web design, others for photography. There's just a lot to it. When I'm painting in Photoshop, I'm only using a small fraction of what it has to offer. And that doesn't really slow me down. I don't need to use all of the different tools all the time. So it's good to know what bits of the interface you should have on screen and what bits you can just hide and forget about. The ones I like to display while working can all be found in the window menu. I like the tools, the layers, and the navigator. And I'll get into the details of each of these in the following videos. But for now, just know that this is the layout that I'll be using. And these are the three important palettes to have on screen. One of the most important parts about using the computer to paint is to let the software get out of the way. What you want to focus on is the fun part, the illustration. What you don't want to worry about is which button to press and where this and that menu is hidden. So I think one of the first concepts you need to learn 
are some handy keyboard shortcuts to navigate around Photoshop, ways that you can avoid using on-screen buttons and avoid using menus. Specifically, the ability to zoom and the ability to pan. So if you want to zoom into your image, you could click the large mountains on the navigator or the small mountains to zoom out. But I'd argue that it's better to use a keyboard shortcut. And on the PC, that's Control plus and Control minus to zoom out. Now when you're zoomed in, no matter what tool you're using at the moment, if you hold down spacebar, your cursor will change into a hand and then you have the ability to pan your document. And finally, at any time, if you hit tab, you'll hide the interface. And now you can paint full screen. And you don't need to worry about things cluttering up your view. Now to bring it all back, hit tab a second time, and there it is. So one more time, that's Control plus to zoom in, Control minus to zoom out, and spacebar to use the hand tool. If you're new to Photoshop, we've just covered a lot of ground. Now when I'm learning new things, whether it's painting or whatever it may be, I like to review what it was I just learned in a safe environment. I don't want to try out the new technique on my next illustration. Instead, I'll just make some little worksheet and I'll give it a few tries until I feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to end each of these introductory videos with a quick worksheet for you to do that'll help you reinforce the techniques I've just covered. So in this case, the goal is going to be to work with those navigation keyboard shortcuts. So the first step is to get the brush tool and with the color picker, pick a red color. And in the upper left hand corner of your canvas, draw a triangle. Now switch to blue and draw a rectangle in the bottom lower right hand corner. And finally, with green, make a sort of a squiggle path between the two. Okay, now that you've done that, you're going to hide the interface with the tab button. And your goal is to begin by zooming in to let the triangle fill the whole screen and use the pan key, the space bar, if you need to recenter. And then to follow this squiggle path all the way down to find the rectangle at the other end. And then zoom out to reveal the whole document. And then try it again. Zoom into the triangle, follow it along, and then zoom out to reveal your whole document. Now this may seem incredibly rudimentary, but believe me, getting really familiar with zoom and pan will make everything else about Photoshop easier.